Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. And today's video is gonna be a different video than I've ever done because it's gonna be a shout out to a few people. I'm making a gift for a dear friend of mine. So first things first, I wanted to shout out to Shabby Dabby Duda. Um, this creative community, especially with drunk journaling, um, have rallied around this wonderful creator by showing support, they're either making videos and using some of her printables and just, she's going through a bit of a rough patch. <clears throat> and so it's really nice to gather around and show support. Um, so I am a newly subscriber to her channel and I love her work. Um, uh, she's British and uh, hopefully nobody gets mad at me, but I, <laughs> she reminds me of the lady, American lady, the paper outpost. So I feel like the paper outpost and Shabby Dabby Doo Dah, they are very similar <clears throat> in the way they create. So we, I feel like we have a British version and then an American version. So if you want to check those people out, there's Shabby Dabby Doo Dah and then the paper outpost, I believe is what it's called. But anyway, so by showing my support, I'm going to make a journal for one of my dear friends. So I printed off some of her printables and they are lovely and I'm not using all of them for this particular project. Some of them I am going to use and for future projects, she has one that I quite like, of course, are these neutrals, but she has this farmhouse one that has some blues in it. So I think that is just so pretty. Anyway, let's get busy. So my thoughts, okay, so Shabby Dabby Doo Dah. And then the envelope journal that I'm making is I'm giving credit to Louisa Heinzel. And she did this wonderful video of this envelope journal and I loved it and I wanna make it. I'll make one for myself someday, but this one's gonna to go to my dear friend, Bev Cole. So if you're interested in this, um, another person to show you how to make this junk journal, Louisa Heinzel has her own style. She's got this grunge way of doing her stuff and it's absolutely fabulous. Go ahead and check her channel out. That's Louisa Heinzel. That's where I'm getting this inspiration for this envelope journal. Now, the gal that I'm making this for is Bev Cole, and she has a YouTube channel, and she's an artist. She's a self-taught digital artist and doodler, professional doodler. And I bought, um, she did this diva collection. So I bought all of her diva stickers, and I just love them. So I am making this journal for her, and I'm using two of her favorite characters. The first one is Ancient, is that eight? Yeah, Agent Diva, very cool. So one side of the journal is gonna be Agent Diva, and then the other side of the journal is going to be Holly G and Cat. So let's get started. I just wanna apologize for the scratch. My cat was up here and I was petting him and then he decided to play a little rough, so I told him it was time to go. So let's get started on the beginning parts of this envelope. Okay, so it was kind of tricky with this project with the envelope journal. You have to make sure you pick the correct size of envelope that your signatures are gonna go around and that your flappy part um, is long enough down here. Some envelopes are kind of short and square, so you can add a flap. And with these two lovely divas, um, one side, is gonna be Agent Diva and the other one is Holly G and Cat. So I'm gonna start with Diva because this is gonna be a little more tricky for me. Um, because she's in this wonderful 60s, 70s black and white uh, cool dress and her little boots, I wanted to kind of stick with the color palette. So I was just gonna leave the envelopes plain but I wanna stiffen them up a little bit so they're not so flimsy. So basically, I'm gonna be gluing the envelopes like this together, and the signature is gonna go around, and then with the tie here. So let's get the envelopes decorated first. So keeping Agent Diva in mind, I thought maybe I would do the flap 
trace this, glue it on, and then do this part in this pattern paper, and then do the inside with either, because Miss Bev, she loves typewriters. If you check out her channel, she's done this cute uh, polymer clay typewriter, I believe. I don't think it's a magnet. I forget if it's a magnet or a um, pen. But she loves typewriters, so I found this uh, paper, but I don't know, I have to decide what part of this envelope I want to be for the pattern paper. But I'm thinking I'm going to stick with this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure the envelope flap, and you got to think about what your design is when it folds down. I would love to have the circle, but maybe if I fold this in half, And then I can have one side of this envelope get part of the circle here, and then we can use this part for the bottom. We'll see how it goes. So first I'm going to just trace this. I think I'm gonna do it on the other side so I don't leave marks, pencil marks. Let's see if I can't get this measured in the middle-ish. Let's see, there's the center of that mandala. I'm eyeballing because, I don't know, I think it's great when I see people, uh, artists do their junk journals and they don't measure and they just eyeball it. I love it because that is me. I will measure when I have to, of course, but if I don't have to, um, then that's oh, perfect. So... That is going to be my flap, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this side out. How are you guys doing today? Thank you for stopping by on my channel. If you don't know me and you're new, I'm Ketra, and I have fallen in love with the junk journaling um, making. I am a self-taught digital artist, but I have been doing art all my life. And so now this is what I do full time. I quit my job in December and I was blessed enough to be able to do that. Oh boy, I better get that. I'll be right back guys. Okay, sorry about that guys. So I was thinking as I had to step away, I went ahead and glued this and I thought I should probably be cutting all the tips of the envelopes all at the same time for both girls instead of doing it one at a time because that would take me forever. My other question that I'm asking myself, if I can find the paper, what did I do with it? Aha. Uh -huh. So this is going to be <clears throat> the bottom. But should I leave this open for another pocket so that when Bev opens it, she can have it? So that's going to be fun to try and measure. But anyway, we'll figure that out in a minute. Let me get the tips of the other um, side of the journal. So for Gabby G and Kat, there. I don't know. I have a pet pig, so I thought we could do... No, let's do what we did here. Let's do piglet, piggy piggy on both sides and under here, and then the flap underneath. We'll do just this kind of neutral color paper. So, let's do this. Let's see, I already did that one. And, you know... There's a little bit of blue showing because I didn't cut it right. But, you know, let's figure out where we want our... Let me cut this off. There we go. Get a better idea of how we want to center the flap. Make sure we don't get a piggy nose cut off. So I used my scoreboard. Then I lost my little scorey thing. But when I measure to cut now, I just use, I don't know, a pin and then I do this. And then I cut. And then I have no paper.
paper mark or pencil mark or pen mark and the line is straight because when I use a ruler I always again I'm heavy-handed and then when I press down too hard sometimes the ruler moves I don't know for me this just makes perfect sense so if you guys want to try that little trick that I just discovered this is how I measure now I'm trimming down the square because when I watched Louisa's video, when she did the front of her, she covered the pocket because her envelope was a different style. But she also left a little edge around here so that she could ink it up, which I thought was cool because I was just gonna cover the whole thing. So I like what she did, but of course I didn't measure it, so I'm just gonna eyeball it here. So that looks good. I'm. Okay, so now my trick is, hopefully if I put this in here like this, and then just trace that, and then hopefully this will fit exactly right. And we need this or this. So I'm gonna turn it, nah, I better. Shall we conserve paper and be like that? Try to get the piggy in there. Or let's just use this raw edge here as a guide. I think I'll do that instead. What? <clears throat> so I was meant to do two more flaps because I was gonna color or color. Um line the inside here. But I don't think I'm gonna line in there. That's just too much. So that's what we have so far. So now we need to do, I'm gonna do this, try to be smart about this. We'll do two at a time. So I will cut the edge off of this one. I have a gill, uh, bigger paper cutter that's in my other part of my house that I use for editing videos and packaging orders and stuff. So this spot here is my, I call it Studio B because it's just my son's old room. And this is where all my art stuff is. And then the other half in the back room, half of it, it's a big lock, uh, the living room or back sitting area is just a big long rectangle. So this half is like where the TV and where we sit. And then this half has my printer, my computer, and my other desk. So I can keep things a little separate. Okay, so this is traced. Let's be smart and cut them both out at the same time. Let's get this out of the way. Have you ever had a scrap of paper underneath and then you're gluing something and then it glues behind your project? Yeah. Okie dokie. I think I'm gonna try this way. See if it lines up better. Aha! Good, good, good. Okay, cool, 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 guys. And this one. Nope, I'm doing it on the paper here. Did the last time. Nope. Okay, cool, cool. It worked. Okie dokie, guys. There we go. Let me trim this here. Scissors. Scissors, scissors, there we go. Okay. 
Okay, so that is that, guys. So there we go. We'll come back <clears throat> to this after it's dried and I will fiddle with the inside here later. So now what we have next is the signature part. So I went ahead and put together the signatures. Let's put this in here before I lose it, right guys? Here we go, here we go. I really need to make a dangle. Maybe I'll do that tonight, I don't know. All right, so here is the signature. It's kind of thick, but I think it'll be perfect because she can doodle or put her stickers in there or, you know. Actually, wait, we're not doing this yet. We gotta do the other thing first. No, let's do this first and then we'll decorate the top. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the signature. So, I decided to put a little map of Kansas so she knows, obviously, she knows I'm from Kansas, but I thought that was pretty cool. I found a piece of paper, well, actually a, a map and cut out the area that I live. So I may back that up with something because it, it's curling. But anyway, here's the signatures. I had to put, get, find some retro prints. And then there's that vellum, the pretty vellum paper. And there. But I wanted to show you... <laughs> So I put where I live, my county and everything on the map and I circled it and I put me, that's where I'm at. Anyway, so I went ahead and made a template. I'm just gonna do the pamphlet stitch. Now here's my question to myself and to you guys. It's too bad you can't like vote and tell me what you think. I'm thinking, so yes, I can sew this regular pamphlet stitch, right? And it's paper and it should hold. And it's gonna go across these, like this, right? Should I bound this with some ribbon? You know, because it doesn't really have a hard cover like most journals, it's just, this is the, the actual paper itself. So, my thoughts were, I have this, it was a belt, uh, like a belt that went with some very nice white jeans. And I don't wear white because I spill stuff. So I've had this for years. So I thought I could use, <clears throat> I could glue this on the back maybe as a reinforcement. Or should I put some paper down first, glue it and then have it as a backing, but then you can see through it. I don't know. Let me, I don't even know if this is gonna, I guess it doesn't matter. It's still retro, right? I think I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna put this on. I'm gonna do it off camera though, guys, cause you know, this video would be like three hours long. Um, so I'm gonna sew the signature first. And then I'm gonna reinforce this somehow. I'll definitely glue it. So I'll be right back with that all finished. All right, so I went ahead and just did the simple pamphlet spit bleh, stitch. And I was playing around with this. And as much as I love it, it doesn't really match. It's still kind of retro. It's thin, if you put glue on it, the glue is gonna show. You couldn't use, I mean, I, I don't have any fabric glue, but anyway, it's so thin that the glue is gonna show up. Okay, so this part that I had, when I was getting ready for this project, I had a bigger envelope I wanted to use, but then I only have eight and a half by 11 papers to print printables on. And then I had this size. I just have a little bit of this pad, pad of paper. So the envelope I wanted to use was bigger, but I'd have to make the signatures bigger than eight and a half by 11 because I just folded them in half. And I didn't have big enough paper, so I had to go down to a smaller envelope, which means when I decorate the top, see my problem is I wanna put the stickers on the front here. 
that stuff is going to have to get cut off. But I think for this um, Gabby G Girl cat, I'm just going to cut the cat off and put the cat over here. Even, yeah, I'm, if I can just barely put her here. So what Louisa did, she had um, some ephemera and she decorated her envelope. And what she did was quite cool. So I cut the cat off because when she, so when Bev goes to lift the envelope to get to the journal, obviously that's not going to be, you know, sticking out there. But what's going to happen is I'm going to cut it and have it underneath. You know what I'm saying? So when she opens the flap, the bottom part of her is under there. So that's what I decided to do because if I don't put it over and I do this, she may not see it as much if it's on the front. So that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to position her and think about it a little bit. Let me fix the shoe a little bit more. It's a little, I kind of got a straight edge there. But also, so I do have those papers too, because Gabby G and Kat remind me of a country girl. So I thought it would be nice to stick with the color theme if I can find oh yeah here we go shabby dabby doo dot she has these uh, very nice neutrals there's some butterflies and birds so I was going to use I think a butterfly cut it out and put it on here too but let's not worry about this this is going to be the stressful part because I only have one sticker and so should we have her standing straight? If we have her standing straight, then, oh, well, maybe. Yeah, okay, that will work. So we need to figure out how much of her we want to cut off. If we want her off to the right. I don't know, I'm going to go off to the right. I think we're going to do this, right? Okay, so pencil, we're going <laughs> to... Mark it ever so slightly because that's where I'm going to cut, guys. Okay. Voila. So, kind of cute, kind of interesting. I don't know. <laughs> I like it, but the thing is, oh, I don't know. Maybe we can. Okay. So, my other thought was, which I shouldn't have done this yet, but anyway, I was going to black out her shadow and put it behind here so it didn't look so funky. But I meant, oh, here we go. This is what we're going to do, guys. So I was going to, so yeah, you would agree, that's cool, and then when you flip it up, it's kind of weird. But if you like that, that's fine. But what I was thinking is we will, have you guys ever done that blackout poetry? I can just do her shadow here and just ink that in black or maybe a light brown for Gabby's side. Yeah, well, she's going to be this way. Although, I'm thinking I should have put... <laughs> I should have put the sticker on here. What do you think? Yep, I should have put the sticker. Okay, guys, I'm going to fix this. Wish me luck. Okay, so here's what I did. And I got to still put cat. Okay, so this makes more sense now. So when you open it up, I went ahead and drew the shadow. So I'll color that in probably in, I don't know if I'm going to do it black. Black seems kind of harsh, but I'll figure that out later. So when you have the flap, although I am not going to mess with um, kitty cat, I'm just going to keep him down there. So also what I went ahead, since I did it on this side, I went ahead and just traced the shadow 
and I'll probably go ahead, maybe, maybe I'll erase it. I'm not sure. Just leaving it just in case I decide to do a shadow or just don't even worry about it. But I also realized that you got to have this book in exactly right before I didn't realize, didn't realize I need to attach it here. So I'll we'll worry about that. Let's get the other side done because this is going to be the more difficult one because poor Miss, what is her name? I have it written down. Hol um, so sorry guys, Holly G and Kat and this is Agent Diva. So here's the, the problem I'm having with Agent Diva. She is too tall for the envelope. So what am I supposed to do? Put her sideways? No, I can't cut her head off. So I'm trying to position it to where she's there and I cut her feet off. I know, shame, shame, shame. But since, but I wanted to use these colorful butterflies or roses. What did I do with that paper? Here we go. I was thinking of using the roses here to see that she's like in a bed of roses or something with a butterfly behind it to kind of, you know, take away. Because if I cut her feet off, your brain might go, where's her feet? But if I have some roses and a butterfly behind there, she could just be in a, like a butterfly bush or something. So that's my thoughts on this. So I'm going to do the same thing, but this time we're on the cover of our journal. So we are going to Agent Diva. We're going to have to cut her in half here because we don't have much room. And cut her feet off there. Put these two, the roses, I think, and the butterfly in the background somehow. I'll figure it out, but I'm going to do that off camera because it might take me a while, but at least you can see the process. All right, guys, I'll be right back. Okay, my friends. So I made a botch job out of this. So when you last saw me, I was going to put Agent Diva over here. But then this hand was covering this part of the flap that I'm going to put a eyelid in for the closure. But you see, I did not figure that out until after I cut her this way. So she got cut this way, so I put her there, and then I was having a, I don't know what happened, but she got cut three times. So she got cut one, two, and then I missed part of her arm here. I don't know, you can see it's, uh, you can see the cut mark there, the cut mark here, and yeah, right here. So I am, I'm glad I did that off camera, but you know, I guess that's part of the process, right? And you can't really tell. I am going to put, I think I'm gonna do some glue so that that sticker doesn't come up and it stays. So Bev, I'm sorry. I made a, she's been cut up, but she's Agent Diva. So, you know, she's been through some battles, but oh, look, I thought the flowers the roses look pretty cute. She's just standing in some flowers and we, we're not gonna know her feet are cut off. So the other thing I need to address before this becomes off is I need to get this attached because if I don't and I attach it wrong, that's gonna be off center. So I need to figure that part out. I may have to watch Louisa's video again and see what she did or just sit here and figure it out. But I'm going to do that on camera again. Um, oh, I meant, forgot to tell you guys. This part here is going to be uh, another pocket. And I made these little cards to go in. Well, that's actually Louise's idea. But uh, three little pocket cards to go in the middle. And I'm going to put some tabby things on top. All right, so friends, I am going to address getting this attached because I didn't think about that. And I may have to go again and watch Louisa's video and see how she did that. All right, friends, I'll be back in a blink of an eye. 
So let me show you what I did here. So I went ahead and decided to just take some cardstock here and make a hinge because I didn't have any um, material. And I'll clean that up as I start embellishing the pages. And then I went ahead and did the shadow, which for me gives my eye something. Like when I flip it up, I'm, I don't know, for me it just makes sense. And I did that in a dark brown for the other side. So now I am going to start embellishing a little bit. <clears throat> and so I've cut, actually I have prepared a few of those ahead of time. So let me get these. I have them in the order of the pages that I'm doing them. And normally I'm not this organized when I decorate, but for the sake of the video, I decided I should probably be a little more organized. And I lost the top for this, not lost, but I don't know. It's somewhere around here. Okay, so I went ahead and added a butterfly because I kind of wanted to tie in the teal, the turquoise teal, whatever color. <clears throat> and uh, Shabby Dabby Doo Dah, this is one of her ephemera downloads. Since she is Agent Diva and is always on a mission, I thought I would put some sort of uh, building black and white to go kind of with her theme of being a detective or spy or whatever it is. And she goes to posh places. And so I just thought this would look really neat here. So it kind of breaks up a little bit of the pattern, but you can still see that it's kind of a retro-ish pattern. And then since I'm still new at junk journaling and all, sometimes I, I come up with some really good ideas on my own. Other times I don't, but I did come up with this little pocket flip thing. <laughs> and there's a little pocket there. And I'll stick some something in there like a ticket or I'm not sure yet, but we'll just start here. So I just put this cut out, which is also from Shabby Dabby Doo Dah, and I created a little hinge. So when you open it, um, it seems, or it should appear to be pretty durable. So we'll put some glue on the hinge thing, flap, I'm not sure. I figured with Agent Diva, this little postcard, maybe she's working for this person, Gosport Hans, and uh, maybe this is one of her clues. I don't know, I'm just making it up as I go along. Okay, so that's gonna be like that, and then I can stick, I don't know, something will go in here. Sorry, out, out of camera there. Something will go here, okay. So that goes there. And then for this piece, I need to stick something on the back of it so it doesn't curl. So I have this piece of, oh, uh, where did I get it? I just got it at the dollar store. It's just a little paper pad of papers and I saw that it was black and white. And I thought, oh, that'll go good with little Agent Diva side of the journal. So as you can probably understand, so there's two sides to the journal with two different characters. And that's kind of fun to create that little bit of a storyline, if you will, with your journals, if that's what you do. I'm not really, I mean, I think it's kind of fun anyway, just at the moment. But I suppose, obviously, all artwork has a story. Okay, I'm back, and it's the next day. So I just wanted to show you guys what I was up to on this journal. So I made some little cards here, pull-out cards. I stapled it, and I had to put some, like, um, that medical tape over it to cover the back of the staple. Because gluing wasn't, I don't know, all I have is a slippy kind of ribbon. But anyway, so these are going between the two envelopes so they're just little tabs oh and on the back there's space for writing so i did that 
I also kind of filled in the black part because it looked a little strange. I don't know. I like it better this way. So one thing I did learn about making this journal, and I will make another one, is not to decorate the cover until after you have kind of put the stuff inside the journal. So let me go ahead and show you what I did yesterday off camera. I just kind of embellished the front, as you probably saw. I can't remember exactly. There's that pocket, another pocket, and then I added the belly band, which you saw, and then I added a little tag with some little writing paper, this coffee dyed paper. And so the tag is front and back and added just a little I thought about embellishing the paper clip but um, this is for Bev and I don't know how how much she <laughs> she would like you know a lot of doodad stuff oh and look at these cute little snippet rolls I made these are so cute they're kind of hard to do but I loved them so this is the little tabs that I made yesterday and remember I messed up so I covered that up with the little mushroom I decided not I didn't realize when I was making these snippet rolls that I needed to make some for the back side, but I didn't. So here's one of the pockets, and I'm going to distress this and cover up those marks. So the pocket just has a little blank side there. Another snippet roll, just nice vellum paper here. Another pocket with a tag. And the back of the book, and then there's a pocket. And so that's this side. This is going to be Agent Diva's side. Then you flip it over and you've got Holly Grand G and Cat. So I think it's kind of cool. I went ahead and did kind of the same thing on her shadow. So when you open it up, your eye kind of can have some place to go. I don't know, it just makes sense to me. I put another little embellishment on her side tea time here's the map of course I marked where I live for Miss Bev not that she doesn't know but it's kind of fun I embellished this as a little pocket belly band thing plain page I added another tag with the butterfly it's some of my paper ruffle that I made blank and then here's the little um I just forgot what these are called Anyway, those things, oh my gosh. I think they're cool, they were fun. I'm gonna make some more. And then I made this, you saw the belly band yesterday. So I just put a cute little, I got these at the dollar store, by the way, they are so cute. And then I have fun kind of embellishing the little corners of things. So I put a button and some shiny little thingamajiggers and some thread. So this is just basically, uh, fold out the, a fold out and it's stuck ah that's what happens when you put it in not dry but anyway kind of just a fold out little fun little front and back you know you could journal on it or whatnot so this will be in here with the cute little heart paper clip if I can there we go a little tricky but kind of cute nonetheless and let's see and another page and another blank page and then another pocket so what I thought I'd do on camera now hopefully this doesn't get messed up as I kind of wanted to distress and these are old sprays that I've had for years wild honey and salty ocean and I thought these colors would look good and then I have this I don't know if I'm going to use it, but it's fire, Fired Brick Distressed Ink. I got these, gosh, probably 10, 12 years ago. And, you know, they used to call it Distressing, and now they call it Grunge by Tim Holtz, and he's been around for forever. And then I got this little pack of inks, and I got it at the dollar store. They're just little ones. And I love to use these. I'm going to use some stamps. And then here's, I'm going to... Um, do the closures here and here's that strip of um, belt it's slick so I had to use a lighter and kind of run it across so that the threads wouldn't keep coming out so that's going to be the closure 
So let's get started. Let me see what I can do. I just kind of want to distress this a little bit. It takes some of the colors down just a tad um, and start there. So we're just going to put this paper here. And I like to, for something that's not too um, dark or too, too grungy, I like to do the antique linen because it's a lighter color. So that way if I don't really like it, then there's really no harm done. So I kind of just wanted to distress it a little bit, kind of take down some of the color just a little bit in spots. Give it some depth, I guess. I mean, sometimes I just do that too. But I just kind of want to just slight grunge a little tiny bit. And then I just use this to do the corner there. And maybe that. So that's, let's see what that looks like. Gives it some some depth, which is kind of a weird contrast to the front. So maybe I can grunge this with a little bit of darker ink, like keep that one. I have Walnut Stain Vintage Photo, which is nice, but I think I'm going to use the black soot because this is black and white and kind of maybe take down a little bit of the white. It's a little bright. So hopefully I don't mess it up, but you know, that's what we do. We just give it a go. Let me just do this, flatten it out a little bit. Maybe do the edges more. But I think if we um, take down that bright white just a little bit, it'll match more of the... Those are my thoughts anyway. Oops. Uh, oh well, she's she's uh, Agent Diva and she works hard, so she's a little bit dirty now on her arm. And I guess I could take these out for now. Try not to get anything on her face. Um, I don't know if I spray some water, maybe that'll come off, but it's Distress Ink and it might make it a funny color. Let's see if I can get that off of her. Uh, oh well, all right, we're gonna leave it alone. So, I don't know, I think it's kind of cool, it's different for sure, it's unique, and I might do a little distressing on the edges and I'll just do it this way a little no, see, you know, guys, you probably know to do this before you glue it on your project, right? That would be smart, wouldn't it? But I guess that's how we learn. I wanted to try the inks. Yes, I'm going for it, guys. So I'm going to shake these up. And I think I'm just going to be... Do it slowly. Oh, I hope you guys are in camera. Sorry. Maybe just do that and let it dry. Cause that looks a little, you know, gives it some depth or whatever contrast, I suppose. While I'm doing that, I guess I could um, ink up. I mean, while that is drying, I could try and maybe distress the tabs on this side. That dries pretty quick. I think we'll be good. I'm just gonna leave that like that because if Bev still wants to write on it or put stickers on there or however she wants to use this journal, um, she has some possibilities there. And as a designer of these journals, I guess, you know, unless you're making it for yourself, you gotta think about what to leave the possibilities open for the person that's gonna be using them. So that gives that page a little bit more depth. Try, shall we try some blue? Shall we try some salty ocean? It's a pretty color. I've already sprayed and played with these inks. They're so cool. At some point, I hope to get more, but right now, just using what I have. That's kind of cool. 
wonder if it, ooh, it even got on the back there. So we'll let that sit for a minute. And all right, guys. So I just kind of distressed or grunged up a few more pages. On the other side, I did spray some some alcohol ink and I think I'm gonna do it on the other side because I think it's pretty cool and I'll stick with the yellow on this one there we go let it sit there and then I thought about putting some stamps maybe these are some of the stamps I got just off of um, Amazon so you know good little stamps to start out with all right, friends, for the sake of this video, which ended up being like an hour and 45 minutes long, and I didn't want to torture you with everything that I went through to make this journal, but I appreciate you. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a really quick flip through so you can see all the things that I added off camera. So I did add a little embellishment here. So let's go ahead and open it up. So I got my little um, ties. A little clippy embellishment thing with some beads and stuff so agent diva will go through I did go ahead and put some Mod Podge here to keep the sticker down and actually darkened it up and kind of antiqued it even more so I love that you guys already saw this I did add um, some stuff in here for Bev and some more stuff in the pocket I went ahead and um, kind of highlighted the ends of my um, what do you call it? Paper, um, ruffle, <laughs> added a stamps, like I said I wanted to, and let's see, you saw that, there's my ink sprays, added a stamp to the tabs, which I thought were really neat on the back side since I didn't have anything to embellish it, I just went ahead and stamped a few places, you probably saw the cards, I went ahead and stamped here to add some depth and character to the pocket. Another stamp here. Some more stuff for Bev to use at her discretion. I kind of just left that. I kind of got a little heavy on the ink there. So that is Agent Diva's side, which I actually ended up really kind of liking after I inked it and added a few more things. You saw the pocket cards. Turn it over. For Holly G and of course I had to add uh, more of a nature I got a little leaf and some colored beads to match her um, outfit and I also much podged this part and it darkened it down and kind of distressed it a little more which I liked it kind of gave it some more of a distressed look I suppose and you saw this Here's where I added another thing for Bev, a stamp. Sorry, I'm trying to keep you guys in camera. Another stamp, and I embellished the ruffle here with uh, some color, a little bit of color. And then I stamped the back side of these tabs, which I really think pulled this together. You got my snippet roll, some ink, some more ink on the snippet roll. You saw this part, and then the stamps here, which I think, again, Pulled it all together, another stamp, left this blank, and some more things for Bev to use. So that's it, guys, for my first process video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for sticking around this long. And Bev, I hope you love this. I'll be sending this out to you shortly. Um, thank you for Louisa Heinzel for her wonderful um, pocket journal. Um, what do you call it? invention <laughs> i love it and again thanks again for watching love you guys and i'll see you in the next one bye